Oh. I just popped this up there as a sample of one of the, the uh, scripts. That's just one actor in a game that contained many, and that's the script the student wrote. So again, going back to, it's an entry level into programming. Students don't realize they're programming, they're just seeing cause and effect, but they really are learning how, some valuable skills. And if I can throw in on top of what Rhonda is saying, um, we don't have iPads in the hands of our students yet, but we do some programming and we've used Game Maker, which is a PC program that lets you make games. And I showed this to one of my students who is a very talented game maker, and he played with it some, and he said, well, you know, I'm really, I, I'm enjoying writing programming now, so I don't really know that this is what I want to do. So, of course, being a good computer teacher, I said, okay, there's got to be something on the iPad. There is a program called Code A. I've downloaded Code A, an app called Code A. I downloaded it. I could not make head nor tails out of it. It's all this gibberish. I actually handed it to the child, and he immediately started creating with it. So even for kids who are programmers, two years ago I would have said programmers cannot possibly use one of these. He was programming. He was making his first game in Code A. First of all, I gave them very little support. I'm district-wide, and I got her started, and, um, and then I actually got Fletcher School started. They're a K-6, and I spent exactly two meetings briefly with some kids, got them started, came back, gave them my tutorial. YouTube was blocked at their school, so I actually used Photosync to get them off my iPad and send them. And that's all I did with those two kids. The day before this presentation, I was at Fletcher School, and I noticed the kids walking around with AppCraft on their devices. They can't take theirs home. And what they, I said, oh, what are you making? They showed me their games, two sixth graders, Phenomenal. They've been working on this, not at home, because they don't have one-to-one -one at home, uh, during recess and other times. And I asked if I could show them, and they said, they were like, oh, I don't think so. And I prod, I thought they were shy. I had to sign a non-compete to even look at it. They were afraid <laughs> somebody was going to steal their game. <laughs> so I can't show that one. But we do have a... Um, little directory there that you can look at and then I think I oh and I know the other thing that I heard from your kids when I was um, interviewing them or when you were debriefing them a couple things really surprised me one didn't they I said so why did you like this over some because these games are really cool do you think they would have said that if I had just shown them those games and they had not created them they were cool because they created them, and they thought they were the coolest games on earth. And so I've been reading John, Jonah Lira's book, Imagine How Creativity Works, and I pulled this quote out. Be part of the creativity pipeline. I leave you with this challenge. He says that our nation is great at exporting athletic genius. Okay, but... We need to, why are they good at that? Because we've created a pipeline, starting with little kids, to groom them, and then they play against each other, and we drive our kids so they can play against better kids. And so I thought that it is our challenge to be part of the system that creates the creativity pipeline, the same kind of system.